MotoGP is the premier class of motorcycle road racing event held on road circuits sanctioned by the FIM and its commercial rights holder Dorina Sports. It is the most elite and the oldest established motorsport world championship. Since 1945, it has simulated technological progress, driven competition and generated millions of passionate fans around the planet. Since its beginnings, MotoGP has been held in 29 countries, some of which have more than one race circuit. And today, a brand new chapter in Grand Prix history is about to begin. This is not Europe, but neither it is Asia. This is Eurasia. This is the land of freedom, the land of Kazakhstan, the world of unknown. Its economic and cultural capital Almaty is known as a state of passion, merit, art, business and speed. Speed that derives changes and growth. The time has come to reveal its beauty and open up its doors to elite race competition. Soko Race Track is located 76 kilometers away from Almaty. The word Soko translates as Falcon in the Russian language. Falcons are considered noble and fortunate animals in Kazakh culture. The whole project was fully sponsored and organized by one of the most respected, honored, and famous businessmen in Kazakhstan, Mr. Alijan Ibrahimov and his son Dostan Ibrahimov. Unlike the majority of the circuits in the world, Soko was never built as a commercial project. Instead, both Alijan and Dostan shared a dream to leave a legacy to the Kazakh people. Good day, I'm Grande Rustam, and today I'll tell you everything about this wonderful project, Soko Racetrack. The core idea was to create a professional racetrack that would not only meet the technical requirements to host MotoGP and Formula One Grand Prix here, but also set new high-end standards. This is when Dustin and his team referred to Dorina and FIM to create a new track that would stand out from all others. The selection for the right architect was a key factor to accomplishing this mission. This was the moment when Herman Tsuki stepped into the game, one of the most famous, experienced and passionate circuit architects in the world. He was happy to accept this proposal to design this new circuit for the best motorcycle race series in the world. While the main track is being constructed, Soko is already running smaller race tracks for training, and competitions, such as a 402-meter drag strip that was designed in accordance to Race America's global standards, a drift rank, a buggy track, and a smaller 1,650-meter circuit used by go-karts, racetracks, and motorcycles. Soko Racetrack also welcomes its guests to paintball, mini golf, a luxury vehicle museum and hotel next to the go-kart track. It has 44 comfortable room numbers, a lobby, rooftop terrace, swimming pool, conference room, and two restaurants. There are two things that blow my mind, mountains and a racetrack. Well, as you already know, there is two restaurants in here, and um, the first one is downstairs, where we already took you to. However, the second one is right here. This is a luxury part of the hotel. I absolutely love it. What could be better than getting a nice meal and glass of the wine and enjoy the rest of the day here at the Soko Racetrack. Here we go. What could be better than getting some proper rest after a nice day here at the racetrack? The first thing I love about those lofts is the spectacular view in here. It's incredible. Well, I'm a bit tired today. Why not get in some nice rest? Let's hit, hit the, the sack, sack, Jack. I'm about to hit this bed and get some proper rest that I finally deserve today. Woo! Yeah! 
The current track configuration was created in accordance with the FIA, FIM and Dorna regulations. Initially, many of the architecture around the track was designed very differently. For example, the main tribune was facing the opposite direction towards the long straight lane, and there was no bridge that currently connects the paddock to the outside world. Instead, engineers planned to create an underground tunnel, but due to the high level of groundwater, a bridge was built instead. FIA and Dorna implemented all of their experience into the Soko racetrack in order to avoid certain problems with safety, weather conditions, broadcasting, logistics, security, offices and even illegal attendance. At the beginning, the original track length was 5.2 kilometers, but after receiving feedback from Dorna, FIM and Tilke, the track was reduced to 4,495 meters. The track main configuration has 4 left turns and 8 right turns. Creating a racetrack requires careful planning for the big and small details. One of the key factors is of course asphalt. When Herman Tilke got this project, he quickly realized that he wanted to make something special about it in order to set new world records. In Formula 1 and MotoGP, we do need to pay attention to the proper race asphalt team. Luckily, Kazakhstan is a rich country in fossil fuels. Herman then realized that he needed to send out a group of specialists here, and that's what he did. They came and took specific measurements and samples of the local asphalt team. They studied it out carefully in laboratory and came up with a brand new specific formula for local track conditions. It is amazing. I'm standing right here in the first layer. It's already done. The two more to go. The middle layer and the race layer. They're gonna fill this gap between the curbs and the asphalt team soon. It sounds really promising. We'll be keeping waiting on that. When it comes to speed, the precision of the details is vital, especially the way Soko uses asphalt paving technologies. First, it created a 3D model for the whole racetrack lane. This model was approved by all involved parties. Unlike traditional civil roads, the track is paved with innovative 3D paving platforms that use millimeter-level accuracy GPS data to lay the asphalt at a specific angle. After talking to Tilke and MotoGP riders such as Jorge Lorenzo and Danny Pedrosa, Soko and Dorna have decided to make this track more interesting to both riders and the audience by adding more elevation drops. We're standing in turn number 4. It leads us all the way up to the turn number 5. This is the hardest turn on the whole track. They have named it as Big Boss Turn here by employees of Dorna. The reason for that is that as a rider you would have to break very late down here in order to get fast up there. But the toughest thing about this elevation is that you have to climb 4 meters up and then have a drop all the way down to 11 meters. You cannot see the exit out of it. Let's go take a look at it. This elevation drop at the 5 is followed by a sharp right turn. This makes it very tricky to ride because any mistake from the rider could cause not only a position loss but an actual exceeding of the track limits or even a crush. This maneuver would require passing turn number 4 at low speed in contrast to the other turns. The track will be surrounded with a protective and homologized FIA fence and six pack wheels. For the first time in racetrack creation, Soko have used the principle of the double left turn. It was implemented right here on turn 12, leading us closer to the finished straight lane and splitting into the pit lane entry. The longest straight between turns 8 and 9 was designed along with FIA and FIM who claimed that this is one of the fastest race tracks in the world. Soko's management team referred to Danny Pedrosa's data engineer who did the race simulation and confirmed the claim. 
Soko has not disclosed the maximum speed data, though they did confirm that soon MotoGP fans will see a new top speed record here. Although the area doesn't get much rain, Dorna wanted to make sure the weather conditions won't affect the race anyhow. Drainage was carefully designed in accordance with homologation race standards. In fact, the choice for the right drainage system was clear – the ECO system from Germany, which is homologized for race tracks. Engineers have used an incline up to 2.5% for the track in order to help water to naturally leave the asphalt and fall into the drainage system while not affecting the rider's safety and comfort. Safety is the key factor that inspired Sokol and race direction of Dorna to create something brand new, something that would keep its riders on the asphalt team, not on the curves. The idea of the curves is to force riders to stay on the track by causing small vibrations due to the elevation drop between each curb. Each block has a difference of 2.5 cm to 5 cm along each edge, which means that the further the rider exceeds the track limits, the harder the vibrations would be. The main tribune will have all required facilities such as a kitchen for restaurant security, a medical center, and even a police station. Sako wanted to have comfortable main tribunes that would deliver the best experience to the race audience. Permanent structures were therefore built. The total audience capacity is 74,000 people with an overall complex capacity estimated to accommodate 105,000 people. Along the starting grip and opposite to the main tribune there are team boxes. Above, there are offices for race direction, podium, commentator rooms, a rider's hotel and a VIP village. Sokko came up with an idea to create something that was never done before. Right above the boxes are areas for the riders to rest between practice and race sessions. Another interesting fact of this track are the administrative facilities. Since Sokko's Grand Prix would be considered as an overseas race, usually manufacturers use some container-based structures or tents. However, here Sokko decided to provide manufacturers with extra comfort. Each of the six MotoGP manufacturers will have its very own office building that would be reachable from the team boxes in less than a minute on foot. These innovations also reached Dorina. There were no other circuits that have constructed an office just for Dorina employees until today. Working together with Sokko, they have created a very specific building just for Dorina needs. This building is called the General Management Paddock Office. And for the last but not least, I'm about to become the first person to ever ride this track on a motorcycle. The track isn't finished yet, it's quite unsafe, however, I got my airbag on and I'll be really careful. I'll demonstrate you every set of the configuration, it'll be quite fun, but dangerous. With that said, I'm about to start my journey here. It's not going to be easy, but we're going to have some real fun right here. With that said, wish me luck. Track, main straight along paddock. That's where the race is gonna start. And I'm on it. Third, fourth gear, making a slight turn. It's gonna be so fast here with MotoGP bikes. Unfortunately, it's so rocky. The surface is still going through construction. So many rocks here, but we try to make it. I can't lean so much, but I can already taste. Taste the sweet piece of pattern. Very nice. Very smooth left turn, Marcus style. And here we go. Hard right, first right turn here. So smooth. We have an intersection with S style here, leading us to our second left corner. Actually, it's so smooth as well. I love it. And that, that brings us to 
our main thing. They call this in Dorna. They call it Big Ball's turn. Why? Because it's so rough. You gotta slow your bike almost to five kilometers an hour and climb the hill. After which there's another straight. I'm on my first gear. I can't switch it because I'm making the right turn. A bit of lean angle here. And here we are. Second turn. Straight. Second gear. Third. Pause. And I gotta slow down here. Go back to the second and third gear. I'm entering my sixth turn. It's so smooth. Sixth right turn. Making an S shape. And I have to be ready to enter the main straight that leads us to 350 kilometers an hour for MotoGP bike. That's one of the fastest roads ever. Here we go. Second. Third. Fourth. Fifth. Yeah! I'm slowing down, slowing down to my third gear, going so smooth, entering my, entering my exit. I love this track. If you think about this first, first turn after this train that is so smooth, you barely feel it. It's so lovely. You can make late turns, late stops here. But I gotta slow down here. So tricky. Entering the pit lane was never easy. But now it's even harder. This last chicane is so smooth. But on the other hand, it's so rough. You gotta actually slow you down. You gotta slow down your bike here. I, I, I'm speechless. Emotions here. I never tried anything like that. None of the tracks. Neither in Aragon, neither in Valencia, neither in Misano. I love it. Here we are at the Soccer Racetrack! Some people believe this track has taken too many years to be finished. Nevertheless, perfection requires time. It is all about the focus on the small details. To create something truly great, we need perfection in order to craft every single detail with quality, patience and passion. Until then, we can only eagerly await a new chapter in racing history.